Hello. Today I want to have a look at a new product release, um, at least the specs of a new product release. It is the Zoom H1N. Now, I've used the Zoom H1 for quite a while. It's a fantastic handheld microphone. And when I saw that they are releasing an updated version of it, I was interested to have a look at the specs and see what the differences are. I am going to provide a bit of sample audio from the Zoom H1. I can't provide some sample audio from the Zoom H1n, as I don't have one. Um, be amazing if somebody gifted one, but doubt that's going to happen. Test recording using the Zoom H1 at roughly one foot away. But yeah, so let's have a look at the specs. So I'm going to start with the Zoom H1. So it's a fantastic little handheld recorder. It records in stereo, uses a pair of XY microphones, can record in WAV and MP3 files. I think if you're serious about the quality of your recordings, you'll record in WAV. And plus with SD cards being as large as it can be, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it supports micro SD cards up to 32 gig and 32 gig, you could record enough audio for quite a while, really. So main specs, as it were, it's got a low cut filter, a record level marker, and it's not got kind of many bells and whistles to it, but I think that's what made it so fantastic. It's one button push to record, the screen's nice and clear, you can change the input gain, change the output level, and yeah, it's just generally a fantastic little microphone. Some of the more in-depth specs, so it supports 120 decibels SPL, it's got a eighth of an inch stereo input and output. And as far as kind of further little specs goes, it's got a USB type B connection and it supports, well, it takes one AA battery. And with that, you can get between kind of nine and 10 hours battery life from a full battery. It weighs 60 grams, so it's nice and light. Though that weight is without batteries, battery will add a couple of grams, but not much. But yeah, so it's straight to the point, really. It's not got many bells and whistles to it, but like I said, that makes it a fantastic little handheld recorder for field work. You wouldn't use it for kind of hugely professional audio recording. It's not meant for that but it is great to capture kind of ambient sounds or foley work out and about. Yeah, so I said, seeing that they'd released a updated version, I was quite interested to see kind of what's changed between the two. And from what I can tell, not lots, but what they have changed, they've concentrate on by the looks of it and it's looks like it's going to make quite a difference to the actual usability of the device so that was the zoom h1 let's have a look at the zoom h1n specs so it's got the same microphone setup so it's got two microphones and an xy pattern so nice stereo field with it as far as functions goes, it's got a few more. So it's got the low cut filter, which the H1 has as well. It's got a limiter as well, a test tone, a slate tone, a voice emphasize filter, playback position skipping, playback speed controls, auto record, pre-record, 
and self-timer and even overdubbing. So in theory, you could lay down the foundation of a song, record something else over it and do that. I don't know how many times it will let you do that, but that would definitely make it so that you can kind of get a demo of a song done on your own if you really wanted. So the analog and digital conversions are the same, 24-bit, 128 times oversampling. Signal processor is the same. The recording format, so kind of what SD cards it accepts, are the same, which kind of surprising. I would have thought that they would kind of up the SD card size that it would support as both of them support 32 gig. Given that you can now easily get 128 gig cards, I would have thought they'd put that in. But like I said, 32 gig recording in just WAV format should give you more than enough time, really. One of the big changes is you've now got a monochrome display. On the Zoom H1, you've got a backlit display. It's a kind of orange colour, which can be a bit horrible to look at so the monochrome might be a bit nicer on the eyes and hopefully a bit clearer as well the SPL is the same the inputs and outputs are the same so you've got a eighth of an inch stereo jacks in and out you've also got a built in speaker which the H1 does have as well but I would say if you're really going to listen back to stuff, you'll use headphones just because of the fact that the speakers in them are going to be pretty rubbish. They've updated the USB port to a micro USB, which is nice. It's good to see that more companies are doing that. I'm, I suppose, a little bit surprised they haven't gone from USB-C, but there's not much of a need really. And... The power requirements seem to have changed slightly. So now it uses two AAA batteries, which means that it needs three volts as opposed to the Zoom H1, which is 1.5. It's also looks like it supports an AC adapter and the battery life should be about 10 hours, which is nice. The weight is about the same there's a Zoom H1, so it should be nice and light to use all day, really. Yeah, so like I said, it, it seems that they've kind of haven't changed much, but what they have changed is probably going to make a small difference just how you use it more than anything. They've added features. The design is quite nice. It looks quite nice and modern, nice and clean. They seem to have changed the kind of positioning of buttons a bit, which is quite nice as what I found to be quite frustrating really is when you were using Zoom H1 on a stand, you couldn't then adjust the bitrate or the recording format without taking it off the stand. You, you could a bit, but it was really fiddly and wasn't very easy to actually do. But it looks like they've changed it, so now you've just got a settings menu, which is nice. I'm hoping they've kept one push recording, because I think that was such a fantastic feature of the Zoom H1. It just meant that you could get to recording so quickly and you didn't have to worry about arming it and then recording. You knew that if you press that button, it was recording. They've moved the kind of scrub controls to go through audio onto the front or the front of it where the display is, which makes sense if you're going to overdub stuff. And yeah, like I said, it, it seems that they've changed it in a really nice way they've 
not basically come up with something with loads of bells and whistles, but I think that they've hit quite a nice midpoint as far as features and upgrades goes. They've given it just enough of an update to make it stand out. I think it'll be great for out and about recordings. It'll be great for kind of lectures and things like that and dictations. So yeah, it'll be hopefully quite a nice little upgrade to it. And nice feature is that you get a free copy of Steinberg's Cubase LE, which Cubase is a nice bit of software to use. I can't say I've used Cubase for a while, but that's just due to personal preference more than anything, not due to the software itself. Yeah, so like I said, I I think that it's upgraded enough to make a nice difference. And what you can get as well for the Zoom H1 and H1N is accessory packs. So with those you get a little tripod stand or you can use it as a kind of hand held system makes it a bit easier to hold. You can get a windscreen with it and you get a nice case as well which is always good. With the H1N you can also get some other accessories so you can get a windscreen so a dead cat looks it for it you get a hot shoe mount a tripod to mic stand adapter and an AC adapter. So I think the fact that you can run it on AC power is going to be really good. Um, as I said, the recording quality is quite nice from the H1. And you could use them for quite a range of things, really. I mean, you could set up a few, put them on mains power and just kind of walk away, really. So that was kind of looking over the specs differences between the Zoom H1 and the Zoom H1N. So hopefully you have a bit of an idea of what they're like, or at least from a technical perspective. I'd say the best way to know what they're like is to get one, have a look at it, or find somebody that has one, see what it sounds like, and really kind of make your mind up that way. It's the best way to make your mind up on any hardware really you've got to use it or try it beforehand or at least kind of do your research on it see what it's like see how it works see how it doesn't work as well as some hardware the descriptions are awful others are great and sometimes you can be surprised by the lack of a feature that you thought it had or features working slightly differently to how you thought but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. And see you soon. Bye.